that's uh, set during the um, uh, what's euphemistically called the Arab Spring or the Arab uprisings of uh, 2011 and 2012, and um, whose uh, consequences or outcomes we're seeing now in terms of uh, the uh, level of violence in the region and the um, uh, refugee crisis that has uh, resulted. And it's the story of a, a father and a daughter, and um, they uh, are forced to go on the run at a certain stage in the, in the, in the story, and it's uh, about the journey that they undertake together. I'd, I'd spent uh, a number of years working in the Middle East, in North Africa, South Asia, on aid and development projects funded by CEDA and some by uh, USAID, and um, I had decided that I was going to write a, a novel a, about based on that experience. And um, when the uprisings then happened in 2011, I was in Egypt at the time, and so I uh, did my best to uh, keep up with what was happening, and um, that strongly influenced the uh, content of the novel. I really felt I didn't know anything about writing novels, that it was uh, a craft that, was, um, that I was just unfamiliar with, and I felt I needed uh, to go somewhere that would uh, one, put me in an environment where other people were writing, but also it would be an opportunity to learn the craft. I'd people I could ask questions. In fiction, which was where my main uh, focus, was with uh, Stephen Galloway and Annabelle Lyon. Um, they were both great. It was, it was very good to be working with uh, two accomplished writers of that caliber. On the morning babies decide not to be born, and mothers cease to give birth, Neda, seven weeks and four days to being ten, late for school, skelters through a flurry of starlings that scatter from the sidewalk, take flight together on balconies and rooftops. At the corner of the alley, she stops. A wall of concrete slabs four meters tall seals off the street its pitted surface spray-painted with slogans for an end to the rule of soldiers. She leans forward. Her satchel slides over her shoulders like the shell on a turtle's back. She gazes through a crack between two slabs at a deserted road, strewn with rocks and gutted car wrecks, flotsam on a beach of broken asphalt. Soldiers lounge by sandbags and coils of razor wire. She hears her father call, hurries to him, follows down a side street, takes his hand to cross snarled traffic at a junction with lights that flash all three colours in festive unison. Flights of starlings sweep over minarets and cathedral cupolas, past skyscrapers as sheer as the crystal turrets of a picture book palace, soar to chase tendrils of cloud, swoop to cut through streets like shards of glass. Lines of traffic not in gridlock to the river. From the metro station, tides of pedestrians rise through steel-grated stairwells, stop to stare at the chittering swarm along the sidewalk. Neda feels a shiver of anxiety. What's going on? Her father shakes his head, appears uncertain. He squeezes her hand, stills the moment's apprehension. In the school courtyard, she slips her hands into the pockets of her hoodie, bites her lower lip, pretends not to listen as the janitor, a retired army corporal, tells her father of troubles. Walls constructed overnight by the military to block streets against protesters gathered from college campuses beyond the bridge of crouching lions. At the city's central square, crowds tore sheets of corrugated steel and scaffolding from construction sites, raised barricades, hung flags from lampposts and banners across buildings that declare the people rise and tyrants fall. The school bell sounds. Loudspeakers crackle to announce morning assembly cancelled, direct students to their classrooms. Neda joins the flow along the corridor and up the stairs to take her place at her desk. She leans forward in her seat, 
not casually the way she does most mornings, but to better see what may happen now the yard teems with flocks that gather on boughs and congregate along the sides of buildings. <laughs>